Hello everyone, welcome to the programmer's world. In the previous tutorial we learned that how to create a Jcombo box. Now in this tutorial, we will create a dynamic Jcombo box. And we will add items from a database to our Jcombo box. You can use any database. The process of adding items in Jcombo box, from database, is same. We have to create a connection with database. And then just use that connection to add items in our Jcombo box. So let's go to our NetBeans IDE, as you can see here, this is the Jcombo box we have already created in our previous tutorial. If you don't watched our previous tutorial, you can see that by searching Jcombo box hash 01. Or you can create a simple Jcombo box like this which is very simple. And we also need a database. In this tutorial I will use Microsoft Access Database. You can use any other database in place of Microsoft Access. Here on desktop I have already created a test DB database. And I will connect this database with my project, and will populate items from state table created inside this test database to Jcombo box. Here, when you will go to the properties of this Jcombo box, you will see that presently some items have been hard-coded to this Jcombo box. Let me delete these items. And then I will run the project. Here you can see that two items are still here, these items are because we have coded these items in our code. Let me delete these items too. Now when we will run the code again, we will find nothing in our Jcombo box. It means our Jcombo box is empty now. So now we will populate the items from test DB. To populate items from test DB, First of all we require to connect our project with Microsoft Access Database. I will use you can access library. We have already created a tutorial on how to connect to the Microsoft Database earlier, you can watch that tutorial also, to know in detail, that how you can connect your project with Microsoft Database with the help of you can access library. Anyway we will do it again here. So first of all add some jar files to your class path by right click on the libraries folder here. And then we will create a connection class to connect our project with test database. First of all, create an object of connection class and then simply create a constructor of my connection class now just define the connection object, by using getConnection method of driver manager class. And pass a string argument to this method, which contains the path to the database. It will throw an exception so ensure to add this in try and catch block. Now I will create a method here which will return this connection object to me whenever I require a connection.
so, you can see, our connection class is ready. Now we will go the source code of our project. So, here when our project initializes, we will create an object of connection class and will store a connection in it which we will generate from our my connection class class like this. Now, you can see that in this con object, our connection is stored. Now we will also create objects of result set class and prepared statement to create the statement. And also, we will write an SQL query to retrieve the data from the test database. Now in try block, create the statement and store the result in the result object. Now iterate the result until the last record, by using while statement. And also ensure to add these items to your jcombo box. Now close the connection object and just run the program.
Here we are getting the error. User lacks privilege or object not found, state underscore master, this is just because we have given a wrong path to our database. So we will copy the path of our database first and then we will paste it in our my connection class. Now save the project and we will run it again. So, as you see that now items are being populated properly from our test database. Now whenever we will add or delete the items in our access database, the items will automatically be deleted or added into our project. And now our Jcombo box is not dependent on our project. I hope you like this tutorial. So please hit a like button and share this project. And also don't forget to subscribe our channels for more videos. In the next tutorial we will learn how to populate the items in second combo box depending upon the item selected in the first combo box. Thanks for watching.